you so much, um, Peg, for having me. I'm really honored to be included. And thank you to all of you guys for coming out. Um, I'm going to read a very short story. So this is a complete story, and uh, it's fiction. It's called Tyrannosaurus Rex. That night, she's got balls, my sister. You can say what you like about her, but she's got balls. She is bursting out of her yentl cum hidey pinstripe dress, a sailor suit of sorts, her knees knocking against the Christmas dinner table and her fist raised high. Under her arm, a pit stain gapes open like the jaw of an alligator. All of the guests, assembled cousins and second wives of cousins and babies of cousins, stop in their gluttonous munchings and look amused and adoring. Whatever Sarah has to say will be deserving. Excuse me, she says, the only one standing. Could I just have your attention for a moment? And the guest's faces reply a Greek chorus. Such a shame what happened to her as a young person. Because diagnoses are always a shame, except to someone like Sarah, who uses diagnosis like it is the excuse that has made her immune to everything in the real world, except sickness. My sister is 24 years old and has never had a job because she is too sick to work. That's the line they've copper-plated against their tongues for when someone asks. Except I see troubled people at the Safeway bagging my pork chops and mozzarella sticks, my extra-value packs of dental floss, and they do not seem too sick to work. They seem too sick for other things to make expensive parent-funded phone calls, to singles hotlines for conversations with men they will never meet, to sit on shopping mall benches decked out in mini skirts and hospital bracelets, hoping for interest. But Sarah, with her Crohn's disease and its unseeable symptoms, its supposed shitting and bleeding and upchucking behind closed doors, has lived for 16 years with this diagnosis as her calling card, adored for the things she has not done, because illness has given her significance. Our parents are gazing up at her with surprise and affection and a little trepidation too, because Christmas is a time for traditions, for hams and holly to show neighbors we are festive and we are doing what we ought, and Sarah's speech is unplanned. Our parents like to be in control. Coffee maker on at 6.15, clothes labels tucked in, peaches air ripened but nectarines refrigerated, parking brake on. For 16 years, they have covered pills in a little caterpillar with the days of the week on each nodule. They have bought her pills with their own money. Her fist grips a Ziploc baggie meant for carrot sticks, celery, PB&Js, but this one is holding teeth. This one is holding adult molars. And from my seat almost directly beneath, I can see that they are yellowed and mossy in spots, bits of flesh still clinging to the roots like bats on a rafter. It reminds me of my trips to the Natural History Museum in elementary school, looking up into the foul, flesh-ridden fangs of the Tyrannosaurus rex. Plaque, my teacher said. That's why good boys, girls, and dinosaurs brush their teeth. And I had imagined Tyrannosaurus rex with a giant toothbrush the size of a man, slowly masturbating his big fangs with a roar like he did not want to do this. What a fucking pain this was. But he knew he must. He knew he ought to, because after all, it was for his health. These are my teeth, says Sarah. And I can see the long blonde hairs behind her knees standing horizontal, electric. She has been considering this. What we are seeing now is fulfillment. My mother stands up flush, but Sarah waves her back. I do my best with nutrition. Forks quietly come down, the relatives finding themselves less hungry. I know what she is doing, but not why. I know she wants us to feel something. Then her eyes are on me, hard twin saucers. I keep them in my dresser drawer. They're very private to me. She is still staring at me. From this angle, she is tall and shadowy, like a monument seen at night. <clears throat> why did you take them, she asks. What were you going to do with them? Show them to your friends? Humiliate me? I didn't, I say, and as soon as the words are out of my mouth, she erupts into tears. The backs of her legs are coated with goosebumps, like she's just been rocked around the death curve of a roller coaster and is giddy with the thrill. 
I will tell you something about the sick. They are ruthless. They are Attila. Hell hath no fury like a body scorned. Their weapon is the guilt we feel for being healthy. It makes them untouchable and limitless, like gods. Yes, I stole your tooth, Baggy, I want to say. I need more teeth, you see. I need them for my prodigious chewing. You see, I chew up a storm, and one set of teeth is simply not enough. <laughs> of course I didn't take it. What would I want with a bag of teeth? Nonetheless, I can see the looks of disgust dawning on the faces of cousins and cousins' cousins and cousins' cousins' cousins, and there in the background, their faces sharpest of all, like the focus of a photograph, are our parents, looking like I have just ripped the windpipes from their throats, like I have ruined their life's work of trying to give everything back to the girl who has had everything taken away. But what has she had taken? She took it from herself. There are guys at my college with leukemia, HIV, loss of limb, who go to their classes and live in the dorms and make themselves try and receive something for trying. A night with a red plastic cup of beer in their hand, a mouth on their dick, diplomas, problems, regular problems like, she never called me back, or I can't finish this assignment, but Sarah never wanted that. Is the effort of seeming normal worth it? Maybe not if one's head over the toilet bowl makes one so powerful, or if simply <coughs> disappearing into the bathroom and emerging with a hand on one's stomach will do the trick, because we do not know what happens in there. But how can we challenge her? How can we know what happens to sick people behind closed doors if, something, if sometimes nothing happens? If sickness is a drama they use to make announcements at Christmas dinner, to win an encore and sympathy, to win unaccountability for their actions? She sits back down, bright eyes, and the cousins and parents are waiting for me to speak. You can claim your innocence, and they will look at you in disgust. You can claim your guilt, and they will be terrified of you. Some molar-stealing forest animal, a wolverine. Sarah, beside me, is shining with exertion. I open my mouth to defend myself, and she opens hers too. We are perfect mirrors. In that moment before she speaks, I can see how full her mouth is inside, a tooth in every slot, like a well-filled movie theater, 32 white jewels lined up in a row. Thank you.